Hi, I'm Scott Watkins, and I'm going to tell you today about our work on organic photovoltaics. The development of solar power is an important renewable energy technology. CSIRO saw an opportunity for our polymer and organic chemistry expertise to be used to develop this technology, organic photovoltaics. About five years ago, CSIRO started putting together a team of scientists with skills right across the area that is needed for the development of organic solar cells. Importantly, we also began to develop collaborations with other research providers and companies in Australia that together worked on a whole range of areas of importance for the development of organic photovoltaics. The research scientists that work on organic photovoltaics at CSIRO come from a wide variety of backgrounds. These include organic synthesis, polymer chemistry, material science, physics, and electronics. More broadly, CSIRO has partnered with other research organisations, such as Monash University and the University of Melbourne, and commercial partners, such as Securency, Enovia, Robert Bosch, and Blue Scope Steel. Securency is the company that produces Australia's polymer banknotes. They are world leaders at printing on polymers. Blue Scope Steel produce a large number of the roofs that are used on commercial and residential developments in Australia and have a great understanding of coating materials on steel and importantly making materials that last out in the sun. In our project, we start by developing new materials that will hopefully improve the performance of our solar cells. We're looking to do things like improve the efficiency at which they operate, the colours at which they absorb light, and the lifetime of the devices. At the start, we make these devices on, very, on a very small scale, perhaps 2.5 centimetres by 2.5 centimetres. In these scale devices, we're just testing them to see whether or not things are improving. After doing device fabrication, analysis of how these devices work, we then move to the scale up phase. To scale up our investigations of materials, we need to do two things. First, we need to make more of the materials. And in this case, we have the facilities here at CSIRO to scale up the synthesis of materials to the kilogram size. With large amounts of materials in hand, we are able to embark upon printing using relatively large-scale equipment. The shots here show some of our equipment where we are able to print rolls of solar cells that are about 10 centimetres wide, but of uh, essentially never-ending length. Recently, we've taken delivery of a new printer that can print about 30 centimetres wide and up to five times faster than the one I'm showing here. When we make these cells on this size, it's still quite a challenge to transfer their lab scale, small scale performance to the printed devices. And that's a key area of our research at the moment. Organic solar cells have a number of advantages over conventional solar cells. The biggest advantage will come in the area of cost. Organic solar cells use very small amounts of material. The total thickness of the device is about 200 nanometers. That's about 200 times thinner than a hair. Smaller amounts of material means lower cost. But more than this, it's the production process that is significant. We're developing organic solar cells that can be produced using equipment that is made for existing printing processes. We're trying to develop our technologies to match existing printing equipment. The printers that I'm showing here were made for other purposes, but we've developed our technology to make use of them. Organic solar cells can also be made in a range of colours, shapes and sizes. Obviously, the more black they are, the more light they absorb, and the better they work. But if there is a particular architectural or aesthetic need for a particular colour, then organic solar cells can be made to deliver on that. Organic solar cells work well under low light conditions. 
so that means they can find application indoors. Examples for these might include small consumer devices or packaging in stores. We've still got plenty of challenges to solve in this area. We're constantly developing the materials to make them work better, make them work more efficiently, and to improve their lifetime. One of the biggest barriers to improving lifetime is oxygen and water. The materials that we use are stable to oxygen and water, but in the device, oxygen and water can get in and degrade the electrodes and cause the devices to short. To overcome these issues, we're evaluating a range of barrier materials that stop oxygen water from getting into the devices. Glass is a very good barrier, but if we want to use flexible substrates, then things like PET are not so good at keeping the oxygen water out. So we're developing a range of processes to apply existing commercially available barrier materials to our cells to make them last longer. Once made, we evaluate our cells in a variety of different ways. We have some indoor chambers where we can vary the temperature, light intensity and humidity to look at how the cells perform as they age. And outdoors, we can look at the performance of the devices under real conditions. In summary, organic solar cells are an important new area of technology that has the potential to change the way we generate energy in a wide variety of applications.